I've come to the Negev Desert to meet a 90-year-old Bedouin midwife named Naifa. Salam alaikum. It's an honor to meet you. Good honor. Thank you for having me. Uh, Naifa, can you show me uh, how you would have delivered a baby? How, when the baby comes out, what happens? They take the blood of the baby and put it on the baby. On the baby, it's against evil eye. So it's against the evil eye. So while delivery hasn't changed, some rituals around it have. The evil eye was caused by the jealousy of others, and the baby had to be protected from it. In ancient days, they also used incantation bowls, which were believed to protect the house or tent. Many of them were to help childbirth. They had images of and spells against Lilith, a demon said to prey upon babies. I want to find out more about these rituals for protection. So I'm on my way to an antiquity shop in the old city of Jerusalem to meet archaeologist Robert Deutsch. Hi, Robert. Hi, Alan. How are you? Very nice to meet you. Welcome, welcome. It's a beautiful store. It's a really... Yes, I'm always coming over here to see some new stuff. I mean old stuff. Old stuff. <laughs> this incantation bowl Robert is holding is a 1,500-year-old spell to ward off evil, written in the language spoken in the time of Jesus, Aramaic. You can hold it. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> you trust me well enough. It's uh, an incantation bowl uh, with spells against evil, against illness, I can't believe it's in such good shape, man. Eh? If the words incantation, spells, and evil make you think of magic, you're dead right. At the time, people believed in it. Everybody would have had one of these bowls in their house? Everybody needs a bowl. Right. Otherwise, the house is in danger. You deposit it in the corner of a house, and uh, it protects the house against evil. You would bury one of these bowls upside down underneath your house to trap evil spirits, like ancient feng shui. This I is always the... carry my uh, lucky coin and a lucky stone that I've had for like 20 you years. Have it. So it's you the have same it. principle. It's the same thing. Right? So Robert, tell me about the evil eye. Well, the evil eye is a bad spirit, and you must have an amulet against it. So We're walking through the old city. And everywhere you see these hands called hamsas. These are amulets people place on their houses for protection and against the evil eye. This is the hand you're talking about, right? This is the hamsa. Yes, that's a hand. It uh, looks like a hand with five fingers, which uh, in Arabic, hamsa, it's five. But those are new, 19th century, 20th century. Considering how many of these hamsas are sold, People still believe in the power of objects to protect their homes and keep bad spirits away. For some, the hand symbolizes the hand of God. But what if putting one of these on your house doesn't work and your health is in jeopardy? Well, there are still those who practice magical rituals from biblical times. Were there really miracle workers at the time of Jesus? And what did you do if even they couldn't help you? Some people turn to magic. But since the population was Jewish, I need to find out how Jews viewed magic. So I'm asking Rabbi Ken Spiro. Are there mitzvot about things like magic? Because sure. people on the margins, I mean, people in desperate situations, tend to turn to those things. There's, right? actually, there's actually a lot of discussion and even laws about about this stuff. Most of it is negative. Most of it is associated thousands of years ago with idolatry and paganism. So 2,000 years ago, I want to engage in some magic. That would depend who you go to see about it. Generally speaking, the magic stuff is frowned upon. Um, but if you had a big rabbi and he says, you know, I have access to a certain remedy or cure that's a tradition that's been passed down to me that, you know, you know most people don't know about it. Um, and you could, you're welcome to do this, fine. But it has to come from a recognition that everything comes from a higher power. So it's who you are, in effect. It's who you are, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So in ancient times, people would seek out rabbis with these magical secrets. But it still goes on today. 
I'm on my way to see Rabbi Chaim Fuchs because he studied the ancient texts and learned the magical rituals that were believed to bring people back to health. As we've seen, there was a widespread belief in the power of the evil eye to bring harm. It was caused by the jealousy of others, and if you hadn't protected yourself from it, now you had to remove it through rituals such as the one Rabbi Fuchs is about to perform on me. He's adding molten lead to water, and he tells me the result is an eye shape. Uh-oh. This is a shape of, a, of an eye. Usually, when we pour lead inside of a water, it should be like this. Okay. Where does this come from? You tell me where that comes <laughs> this is, from. This says that you have someone that bugs you a little bit with an evil eye. So somebody has, has put an evil eye on me. Yeah, just a little bit. You don't have a lot. What do you mean a little bit? <laughs> an evil eye. So they only hate me slightly. They're jealous of you. They're jealous of me. Now, how do I, how do I ward off this evil eye, then? This is what you do. You're going to do it for me. I'm glad to see my evil eye melting away there. That gives me some comfort. Okay. You heard this one. Yikes! I'm getting a little nervous with hot lead over my head. But you can see, you heard this explosion. This, this tells us that the evil eye just got out. We won. We won. And you can see it. Nothing here. Wow. Well, that was close. Was the evil eye really removed from me? Or is this just superstition? In the time of the Bible, as today, there's no shortage of beliefs around healing, charismatic healers, and people who seek them out. But not all charismatic healers were rabbis, then or now. Why are large numbers of people drawn to these mysterious healers? To try and find out, I'm on my way to see Oren Zarif, a very busy healer around here. Excuse me. Come. Shalom. If I'm not mistaken, Oren, you don't have any medical training, physiology or, or biology or anything. So I'd like to ask uh, Oren, how does he diagnose? And now I give you a lot of energy of the body. I penetrate by the subconsciousness. I want you two minutes. Close your eyes, okay? Close your eyes. Very good. Now I give you a lot of energy all the body. Slowly, slowly, you feel better. Okay. Shalom. Orn, do you consider yourself to be a, a miracle worker? Megadol klum. I feel like I'm a key to be able to give to people and to give to people. Not beyond that. That in the conventional medicine, there is no answer to the psychosomatic problem that is caused by things that are happening. And if a man was strong, עם כוח ויכולת, כפי שאני מעביר לאנשים, הוא היה מסוגל להתגבר על כל בעיה. שיקום פה אחד עכשיו, מכל 100 מטופלים, או 400 או 500 איש שמגיעים אליי ביום, שיגיד, אני לא מאמין, לא תמצא דבר כזה. מאמינים? כולם מאמינים. And they don't need explanations for their belief. You can't explain what it is. And I don't want to know what it is. I don't want to feel better.